song you won't worry about yourself? He is a songwriter, composer, musician, all of that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're still waiting on the music. Praise you. I say CD. My, my daughter said, Mama, they don't call CDs. <laughs> I, I, I try not to say CDs anymore. I, I just say music now. I'm, I'm waiting on the music. Praise God. Mama, they don't call them CDs no more. So when I turned around just now, I said, we're still waiting on the music. I started to say CDs. <laughs> I'm sorry, so I thought about what my daughter said. Let me just say CD um, music. <laughs> Okay, because I know what I'll be talking about. That's right. That's right. He's got some beautiful, beautiful music. That's all my yes. yes. Very anointed songwriter yes. Yes. and composer. Praise God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We're waiting on. Maury Douglas to come and introduce our speaker, praise y'all. He's running around like a busy bee. It's the energy of this man is just on Shabbat Shalom! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Listen, at this time, after all that wonderful worship that has gone forth in the past two days, hallelujah! I'm not a mathematical genius. I'm still trying to figure out how we get three days and three nights out of two. I'm really dyslexic, but that's a hard thing to go over. But we good. Anyway, how y'all doing on tonight? Hallelujah. Are y'all really doing all right? Hallelujah. Raleigh's in the house. I feel this 
this burning. And I'm like, what in the world going on? And he says, oh, it's nothing but acid reflux. He said, I said, but I don't have acid reflux when I eat hot sauce. I don't have acid reflux, you know, when I'm eating a lot of spice and I love spicy food. I get that from my mama's side. I love my mama. But it never occurred to me, right? So he said, well, how long you been having this? I said, for six years. I said, I can remember being on the stage and I was getting ready to open up for Lee Williams and the Spiritual Cube season. And I, I remember getting out there and I, and I let out a holler, right? And then all of a sudden I got lightheaded and I was like, what in the world going on? And then some of my, my people grabbed me because they, they see me at the edge of the stage and they was like, you okay? I said, man, I got dizzy for a second. And, 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 and this has been going on for six years. He said, and you've been taking acid reflux. I said, yeah, but acid reflux causes all of that. He said, no, nah, they don't sound right. He said, I'm going to send you to a, a, a specialist, a heart specialist. Right, right. So they put me on to make a long story short. They put me on this machine and stuff. And, and, and the machine, now to you, it may have been going like this. But to me, it was going like this. So I had to grab myself on the machine like she says, you all right, the little white nerves. I love my little white folks. <laughs> she says, Mr. Douglas, you're okay. You okay? I said, I got kind of dizzy for a second. Now, I know this ain't normal, so I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So the doctor comes in and he says, well, we're going to order a uh, heart catheter. What is it? Heart catheter? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to put some dye in you, and then we're going to figure out what's going on. Because it kind of, it kind of alarmed me. He says, now, this is a black doctor talking. He says, my brother was ruled acid reflux, and he had a heart attack. Wow. So this is alarms for me. I, I'm trying to say, man, I'm 53 years old. and have no heart attack. <laughs> he said, well, we're going to figure this out. So he goes, and we go through the thing. They put the thing in, a little camera in my arm, and make a long story short. He comes in the room. And he says, Mr. Douglas, he said, well, let me talk to Mrs. Douglas. Miss Douglas, your husband's in bad shape. So I look at my wife, I'm like, Negro, I just walked in here on my own. What do you mean I'm in bad shape? So he says, he says, we're going to have to order immediate surgery. So she, she looking dumbfounded like, uh, immediate surgery, uh, what, he need a stent or something? No. All of his arteries are blocked. I don't know how he's made it this long. Wow. So I'm still dumbfounded and I'm saying, wait a minute. You mean you're going to have to open my chest up and you're going to lay one on this side and one on this side? He said, yes, sir. I said, oh, father. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, are you all right? I said, he said, does that alarm you? I said, well, no, open me up, don't alarm me, but you terminating my sexy body, that kind of messes me up. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? It, it kind of gets, it kind of messes me up. But to make a long story short, make a long story short, I, uh, he, he was like, he was like, but seriously, you need a surgery, you need a surgery right now. I said, okay, let's do this, let's do this. So, to make a long story short, uh, Pastor, I get into the surgery, they do the surgery, and I wake up with this thing in my mouth. So, they, they, uh, they say, uh, Mr. Douglas, he's coming out right now, Mr. Douglas, uh, don't be alarmed, you got this tube in your mouth and it's going down your throat. So, I, I'm looking around and I'm trying to say something, but I can't say nothing because this tube is in my throat. Yeah. So, what I was trying to say, One baby over there, one baby over there. Yeah, what, what I was trying to say, I needed to use the restroom. <laughs> but I didn't realize that I had this thing in me. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and so when they, they said, well, this is gonna be uncomfortable for a second because we're gonna pull this thing out of your mouth. So, yeah. so I was like, okay, so they pulled this thing out of my mouth and when they pulled the thing out, I was like, I need to use the bathroom. <laughs> so it was like, well, Mr. Douglas, you can't get up. I said, why? I can get up. 
no, you can't get up. So I said, okay. So I realized I got this tube in my neck on this side. He's got this tube in my neck and the blood and stuff running back and forth. And, and then I looked down, they got this thing cut all the way open with the little band-aids and stuff. So I was like, okay, I got this. I said, I made it out of this one, but I, I was kind of nervous until I heard the man across the hall and they were running across the hall. And they said that he ain't gonna make it through the night. And he had the, the same surgery, but it wasn't quadruple. It was just open heart surgery. Yeah, it was the three. So yeah, he had triple. So so he says he so the lady came in and she says, Mr. Douglas, you got real lucky. So I looked over at my wife, I said, Well, you call it luck. I call it favor. This is man of y'all up on this note right here. Now this may make you laugh. So after they after they they came back in and they said, I, you know, it's it's a it's a miracle that that he's ready to get up. And they they working on that third and fourth day, and he's the next day and he's trying to get up. I said, please let me get up. I'll tell him whatever it is, because I got a boo-boo. <laughs> So, so listen, listen. They gonna help me. They gonna help me. So I said, listen. I don't need no help. All I need you to do is take that little walker thing and bring it out with the little bathtub thing in the middle of it, and I'll get there on my own. They said, no, Mr. Douglas. I said, please. When I tell you, I gotta use the bathroom. I gotta use the bathroom. I'm saying this because I'm a realist. So anyway, anyway. So, so, so. As they, as the lady came in, the little. What it called Becky? Becky comes in. Becky comes in and she says, Mr. Douglas, we're gonna put it right here and we're gonna help you. So I said, Well, I'm telling you. So anyway, they helped me get there to the bed, uh, to the to the little stool thing. And so I sit down. So I'm looking at Becky like you can leave now. So she's standing there looking at me. I said, Okay, I'm warning you. <laughs> So, 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 Lori, I say, I'm warning you. You might need to leave right now. Cause everything that was in me for a few days is coming out. But listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere spiritual. Watch this. I'm gonna bless y'all. Watch this. So as I sit down, Pastor, I sit down in the little commode at the hand, and Becky's looking at me, and the first one says, pew. So Becky, I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, you don't need to, uh -uh, don't go up your nose. You need, I told you to leave. I'm warning you. I warned you. And the next thing you know, all chaos broke loose. And she said, oh, oh, oh my God. Am, am I lying? Am I lying? So I told my wife, I said, ring the bell. Tell them to come back. I'm going to need another fill-up. I'm not done. I'm not done. So the most high, watch this. I'll tell you, I'm going somewhere spiritual. So the most high was revealed to me that he was flushing me out of all. Hallelujah. All the unnecessary stuff that I didn't need. That was still backed up in my system. Watch this now. I was a little, even after the surgery, I had some weight on me. She comes back in, Morex, she brings another thing. She, she, she comes in with a little thing. <laughs> she picks it up. I'm standing up on my own because she, 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 she don't even notice that I'm standing up on my own. So she takes the thing. <laughs> and she says, oh, you was really, you really had to use the bathroom? I said, ma'am, please hurry up. I'm not done yet. <laughs> so she brings the thing back, Pastor. She sits it down. I sit down again. Boom! <laughs> I bust loose one more time. <laughs> this was the last time. Not the, so this African lady, oh, what was her name? Judith. One was Malachi, and the other was Judith. Come in the room. After Becky. 
<laughs> and she says, Whoa. She said, Uh huh. Uh huh. She says, Oh, you really had to you really had to go, didn't you? I said, Yes, ma'am. She says, You good? I said, I'm good. So she says, um, Miss Douglas, do you want to give him a bath or you want us to give him a bath? <laughs> I'm letting y'all know royalty. I'm letting y'all know something. So she says, y'all can give him a bath. <laughs> brothers, brothers, I want y'all to understand something. When the queen says, y'all can give him a bath, she came in with some other sisters that came in the room. And they were all from Nigeria. One was on this side, and one was on this side. And she said, look at him with the smile on his face. I was saying to myself, Wakanda. She, oh, she, she grabbed my hand. Give me a hand, honey. Don't be jealous. And she started washing up under my armpit and stuff. And said, she says, oh, you happy now, huh? I said, Hakeem is home now. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'll just mess with y'all. I'll just mess with you. Listen, listen, I had, look, we didn't went to worship, a little bit of comedy. Now it was time for the break. Hallelujah. about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, when I first heard him, I said, oh my God, he is annoying. <laughs> and he's arrogant. Listen to him. This is what I said out loud, and she was listening. But she noticed that I never left the screen. So I'm standing looking. And then he started talking about stuff that I ain't never heard. No more rape, no pastor, no teacher, no evangelist. None of them address. And he just stayed there. And all of these, he's had like a hundred and something people commenting. And some of them was negative and it didn't phase him. And I was like, who is this Negro? And he was going in like they wasn't even there. And then every once in a while he'll see something that catches his eye and he'll address it. And then next thing I know, they'll pop off the screen. Somebody else will pop back home. I was like, who is this cat? So I started looking up stuff. I started looking up stuff and, and, and finding other videos on him. And, and I noticed something else that was inside a chat room. His issue, his his queen, his wife was right there and she was like welcoming everyone in the chat room. Whether you was against him or whether you was for him, she was welcoming. I'm like, man, I, I, I think I might be hooked on this because she's standing by her man. That's she right. wasn't on Tammy one day, but she's standing beside <laughs> her man. But he was going in, y'all, and he was talking about not just Bible, but he was he was tying in historical facts yes. with Bible. Yes. And it was lining up. Yes. So the most high laid upon my heart to reach out to this cat. So I reached out to him. He never responded. So I was like, what in the world is going on? So I made the mistake and I asked another friend uh, who was another Moray. I said, do you know this pastor? Keith will stay away from him. I was like, oh, okay. He, he trouble. He trouble. So I was like, oh, okay, okay. But you know, what be, what happens when you tell a child? <laughs> Don't you touch that stuff. That's it. Don't touch it now. That's what happened. So, so I got I got bit by the love bug because I fell in love with this man's method, his teaching. Now, some will say he's aggressive. Some will say he's arrogant. Some will say that he's just a philosopher. But I call him a man of the word, a man of Yah. 
a man that stands on the word. And you know, I realize even from the Christian church that when you're walking this walk of faith, you will have to stand alone. Yep. That's right. That's Family and friends, right. you can forget about that. But you will have to stand alone to the point where the only one that you can depend on is the most high God. That's right. So at this time, I want to introduce, and, and to make a long story short, he reached back out to me when I was getting ready to give up. I was like, man, this man's big time. He ain't got time to talk to these little imps like me. So <laughs> just when I said that, he reached out to me. And he has been my brother ever since. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking to the ones that are listening on social media that don't have no clue to what I'm talking about. This man went from boo boo and on the stool. Now he's talking about it. Listen, I want to introduce to you on tonight a man of Yah that stands on the word that will preach in season, teach in season, out of season. It don't matter what you're talking about, what you think. He's going to speak what thus saith Yahuwah on tonight. I'm talking about none other than Pastor Keith Wilkins of Texas Our History. Stood on that for 20 
25 years in the Christian church. Well, say that. And y'all said, I see his heart. When it comes to me, he's pure. He's doing it. It's like a covenant. He's committed something to me. Preach funerals free. Weddings free. Fall rain not day and night. Used to wear cream. I still got it. Four hundred dollars a bottle. Two Rolex watches. AMG trucks. BMW trucks. Cadillacs. Had a house in Indiana. Did the wife stay there? Had a house in Georgia. Let my girl stay up there. They was four brats. Gave him a nanny. Gave the nanny a vehicle. And me and Shirley went back up to Indiana. I was in the system. The system's wrong because he's already proven. Come on now. The system wrong. But I knew there was a void in me. By the time I got to around my 20th year, I was just preaching. I didn't even have a conscience. It didn't matter. It became repetitious to me. Going to church on Sunday, going chicken, we got to church, we go up to Texas Roadhouse, Red Lobster, but it became repetition. Yeah, yeah. I was without. I had a boy. Come on. And I found myself one day. Walked in the barber shop. And this brother was preaching a message called the Negro Man. It was on his, the barber was, it had it on his uh, CD player, Negro Man. And I was tired enough to listen for the first time. All them vehicles, two houses, all that money, I was tired enough to listen. I hear people ridicule people like R. Kelly. That's a brother who's tired without y'all. That's right. That's right. We are the nation, Hebrew nation. Nothing can fill that void. That's right. But the awakening. That's right. That's it. I testify from my own experience. Hallelujah. I didn't need nothing. Virtuous woman, always by my side. Strung out on crack. She's praying. Wow. Didn't believe in myself. She spoke into my spirit. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Quick care, Bishop. She spoke into my spirit. The things she spoke 30 years ago begin to read. broken man. Wow. I was hurt. 25 years I believed in the gospel. I preached it. Like a Christian apologist, I would knock down the Hebrew nation. Knew the law inside out. You'd have thought I was from the Haran dynasty. I knew the law. But it profited me nothing. Wow. Until I found myself broken. Anybody in this room ever been broken? Yes. You're looking at a broken man. I'm not Pastor Wilkins. They call me that. That's not who I am. He's gone. That was the system, brother. But I promised myself something that accidentally happened to me in the natural, but in the spirit, it was predestined. I said I will never touch the scriptures again if I don't know the history. Yeah. That's right. Of that scripture. Yeah. That's right. I have no clue what I'm going to touch. When I say that, the history that Yah has showed me about these scripts wow. has totally transformed my life. Wow. wow. Hallelujah. Not looking at a professor, 
dyslexia. A lot of stuff you hear me do on Facebook is memorized in my brain. I know it like the back of my hand. Study the Atlantic Strut Slave Train. If I'm a teacher, I'm going to study it for at least 10 days. 10 to 20 hours a day, I'm going to study it. Mirrors full of papers. Just study it. And then I just rattle it off. Just comes out. But today I'm going to use something different. I'm going to use some facts. <laughs> <laughs> Promise I never stand, never say nothing, if I couldn't prove who I was. If I tell you to put history with the scripts, I'm going to be the first part taker. So I'm going to show you some history that I stand on if I could. In the book of Luke, I want to give honor to the most high. In Christianity, I can work a world. I was gifted at working a world. Calls from everywhere. I would go, room jam, I can work a world. I can bring you to your emotions. I can put you in that scripture. But I didn't know history. But most of all, if I can say anything that honors y'all to me, is her. <laughs> as bad as I was a companion bishop, pastors would tell her, get away from me. He has no hope. He can't be delivered. Something's wrong with Christianity because there's men here that believe that. Because they can't see the actual ruin and see beyond it. I was in a bad home. I was homeless, sleeping in my car. Met her, and she had no clue I was on crack cocaine. I was crafty when I met her. I had on a suit tailor made. I spent two years in Korea. My suit was tailor made. I looked like Johnny Gill. I was ready to go. It was about to come to a dish. And she thought I was from somewhere. And when she found out, more than this, it didn't matter. Sometimes chemistry yeah. is the foundation yeah. of everything else. That's right. Raise your heart. Come on. And so there I was, strung out on crack, sleeping in my car. I was chasing crack so bad when I got broke, I would be on the floor looking for mock balls. I used to take this Budweiser can and put holes in it. And I put the ashes on it. And I take that monk ball, hoping it's a crack rock. And I just smoke it. Wow. Wow. You talking to a U.S. paratrooper. Wow. Strung out on Air bomb. Yeah. My uncle, the command sergeant major right down the street. Yeah. Strung out on crack cocaine. Nobody could help me. <laughs> but y'all had an answer. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, I didn't know how to even appreciate it until I was broken. Hallelujah. Again, I haven't stood in the sanctuary for five years. I vowed I'd never stand in one again. To be a gospel preacher, lay hands on over more than 600 people, and you was wrong. The guilt. Of you was wrong. Her Hebrews to Negroes breaking me. Hitting Hebrews breaking me. Y'all said I gotta break you farther. You ain't broke far enough. Wow. Wow. Say that, say that. Wow. And it's breaking me. I'm troubled in my spirit. I'm having warfare going on. But one thing that God allowed to be clear in my spirit. Don't you touch this without the history. Well, Father. Hallelujah. Well, Father. And I found myself on slave plantations. There's some things I won't touch today that I could with the edicts because I gave somebody their word I would consider if they could write a book about my journey, about my journey. 
Now, there's certain things they prefer me not to touch. I'm not saying I'm going to do it, but I'll keep my word till I decide what I want to do. But if you don't, Matthias is on his deathbed, the man of Abraham, the father. He implores his sons, don't lose sight of your history. That's right. We walk around America as colonized Hebrews. Come on now. That's right. Trying to fit the system that was not designed for us. That's right. Y'all said I gave unto them. He said the son of Japheth. He said the son of Ham. He said Ham, Japheth, and uh, 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 Shem. I gave unto them. Yes. After their own land. That's right. After their own language. And here I got a government. Come on now. What is my history? Come on. I don't believe you can be a remnant. <laughs> and you don't know your history. That's right. Because that's personal to y'all. Yes, it is. And the scripture says, and the beast on its head was blasphemy. Colonization. Because it speaks against y'all after their own land, after their own language, after their own family. Colonization to where you land, your language, and your family. That's the blasphemy. That's on the head of the beast. It speaks against y'all. I want to walk you through a few things if I could. I want to give a demonstration. It'll better help you understand who I who I am. A lot of times you see me on Facebook, I script that out and you don't really get to meet the person. But I want to show you the format. There should be sources and method. If I say put history with the scripts, there should be proof, fallible proof, why this needs to be done. In the book of Luke, if I could, then we're going to get to those meetings. The book of Luke 21. Let me read this if I could. The book of Luke, the 22nd, the 21st chapter of the book of Luke. Let's look at the 20th verse if we could. Luke 21. And then ye shall see Jerusalem come past with armies. Then know it that the desolation, therefore, is not. History tells us those are African armies. Rome only had four legions there. One came down the Mount of Olives. They came from the north, south, and the west. History tells us that in the ancient world, when you went to war, he was also fighting for the aid of those local armies. History tells us that Quito's wars were fought in North Africa. Trajan took the war to the Jews. Not the Jews went to Rome, but Trajan took the war to the homeland of Jerusalem. And the history clearly says North Africa. So when you see those local armies, he's talking about African tribes. Mm -hmm. Genesis tells us that Ham will be the servant of Japheth. Mm -hmm. And 70 AD reveals this. Mm -hmm. But let me show you something if I could to prove history has to be known. Let me show you something. It's that next verse. Then let them that are in Judea flee to the mountain. Uh -huh. Let them which are in the midst of it depart out. Let not them that are in what? Countries enter into. 22nd verse. I'm going to ask you a question. So I will, you will feel comfortable with my history. If you're conventional, I will trouble your waters up here today. I'm not known as the troublemaker from that. I've earned my stripes. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. Listen what he says in the 22nd verse. For these be the days of vengeance. What vengeance? 
is the question. You will not find that vengeance nowhere in this KJV. So how do we get it? Did Hamashiach lie? Is he talking crazy? Is this a writing of Philo? Is this a Greek philosophy mixed with the scripts? Or is there history that explains that? 66 AD, the Battle of Bel Horab, the taking of the Aquila, the Roman messenger God. The Jews defeated the Romans in the Battle of Bel Horab. They took their Aquila, they took their equipment, they took their catapults, their armory. And Titus, when he got revenge, he took the things of the temple. That was that revenge. When you hear this is for revenge, he's telling you about the battle of Beth Haram. You won't get that without history. We read too many scriptures and you can't get it if you don't put history with it. Now let me give the demonstration and we're going to get into these things. Revelations, watch this. Revelation bear witness to everything that is being said in Deuteronomy 28 if you know the history. You don't know the history, then you won't understand Revelation. Multiple angels sealed the book. It will take multiple prophets to unlock it. The only part of Revelation that I unlock is history. There's other parts that others must unlock, but I do know what Yah has shown me, and I have history that correlates with that which Yah has spoken. If you listen to the Edomite, You'll be all over the place. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to history, it will put you right there in Revelation. Exactly what John was saying. When John said a beast, he's not talking about a, a fairy beasty animal. He's talking about a system that is so, in, so inhumane that it'll be beastly. Mm -hmm. John can't say helicopter. He's never seen a helicopter. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's right. Come on. Come on. That's right. Huh? That's right. Yeah. So John is prophesying in part because the dispensation of time has not revealed the knowledge that he needs to put it in the full. Mm -hmm. Huh? Watch what John says. When was John prophesying prophetess in the captivity of the Romans? That's huge. Do not ignore John was prophesying as Judah is under the occupation of the Romans. I will prove to you tonight that you don't know what you need to know about the awakening if you exclude the Romans. The Romans include the Roman Empire, the Roman Republic, the Pontifus Maximus. If you exclude these people from your understanding, you're caught up in part. Let's look at this revelation. Is it true? Did it happen? Is it going to happen? Revelation 13. Because of time, I'm going to paraphrase it. I'm going to give you a summary because I've already taught it. I teach something, I'll only give it back in summary. Well, I see it's Revelations 13. Listen to what he says. Verse first. And I stood up on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise. Out of the sea, having seven heads, ten horns, the colonial powers, and the main contributors of the Atlantic slave trade. Seven major contributors of the Atlantic slave trade. Ten that make up the colonial powers, and seven of them are already in the major contributors of the Atlantic slave trade. Seven heads, those who was responsible for your captivity. Ten horns, three other nations that also make up the colonial powers with those seven nations. History proves this. I've been ridiculed by mores about history, but yet history confirms what y'all told me to do. What? We can all say we this, we can all say we that, we can all say this, but there has to be a resolution yeah. to what you say. It's controversy to say put history with the scripts, and yet I have no evidence to back that what y'all said. I know a lot of you are meeting me personally for the first time. And yes, I am controversial. <laughs> yes, I do speak as the Indians would say with a sharp toe. But it's the conviction that I'll never touch this again. 
without history. Because I've been burned 25 years in Christianity. Bishop, I've asked y'all so many nights, how many people am I on the hook for? Wow. wow. People don't understand that. Father, Father, Father. How can I get out from under this yoke? Father. I don't care about a BMW. I don't care about a house. I don't care about none of that. Come on, come on, come on. How do I get out from under this yoke? Teach my word the way I'm giving it to you. Even if you really can. I'm not worried about the ridicule. I'm facing a yoke. That's a lot of people in 25 years. Come on now. Say that. Say that. You know where I'm coming from. Say you know that. where I'm coming from. Y'all bishops, you know where I'm coming from. Watch this. That's what he says. You have to hear this in Revelation. So this sea, this beast rises from the sea. There's only one thing in the humane so bad that was beastly that was in the sea. The Atlantic slave trade. <clears throat> You got to hear the right words to connect the history with the dots. The Atlantic slave trade came up out of the sea too. What's this? What's this? And the beast which I saw was like it unto a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear. His mouth was like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, gave him his power and his seat. Great authority. Did you know the Catholic priest? Catholic bishops throughout history worship a dragon. In the secret chamber at Rome is a symbol of a dragon. A symbol of a dragon. Who gave him power? The Papal Bull. 1452. Pope Nicholas V. You can be enslaved. If you ain't subject to the Christianity that the Pope said it would be. If you find those heathens, why were they called heathens? 331. The Sabbath is changed from Saturday to Sunday. Anybody don't do it on Saturday, on Sunday is a heathen. History bears this out. Constantine didn't do that. Pope Sylvester, the dragon, the Pontifus Maximus. He was the only one that had the authority. You have to understand Rome if you're going to understand our people. Constantine was not a was not a Pontifus Maximus. He had no authority to write religious law in Rome. He needed a Pontifus Maximus. And without a Pontifus Maximus, he needed civil civil approval. And the emperors of the Senate didn't like each other. Thanks to Julius Caesar. We'll deal with him in these endings. So you now you got the Papal Bull of 1493. The expulsions of the Jews in Portugal and Spain. But you see these Papal Bulls affecting a people. Bringing them to their demise. Calling them out as heathens. Because they were Sabbath keepers who kept the Sabbath on Saturday when Pope Sylvester said you're a heathen if you don't go to Sunday. So when you hear that, that language in West Africa, they're looking for the heathen, they're looking for the Sabbath keeper. If you study your history of West Africa, and you look into the 14th and the 15th century, you find that even when they were the greatest traders in the world, there was one day of the week they wouldn't trade nothing. The Portuguese wrote about it. We trade with these burgers. We trade with these people. And there seemed to be a people that's separate from all the others in that inhabited. You can't get them to trade. On the Sabbath. We keep hollering reparations, Bishop. That's a drop in the bucket. When we were the greatest traders in the world. The Mali Kingdom was so great at trading that their clothes was made of gold dust. Wow. Mm. Wow. That's trading. See, we keep thinking, oh, we just were swinging on trees and 
The richest man in the world was a king in the Mali kingdom. Still today. Yep. And you from that area. You've been beat down by the system of colonization because it's not your land, your language, and after your family. It won't fit you. It's not your DNA. Unless Yah is just there. When he brought us back, from the flood, he knew what he wanted, and he made it clear. The sons of Shem, after their land, after their language, after their families. And here you sit, colonized, under a government name. <clears throat> and we teach, and then we run, and we name our children under government names. And it feels right. Because it's passed from history down throughout time. But here's this beast. It rose from the sea. An inhumane system. The worst inhumane system the world has ever known is the Atlantic slave trade. Pastor, I still ain't connected the dots that that's the slave trade. We're going to get there. I wouldn't open the book if I couldn't bring you to a conclusion. That's right. That's bad teaching. I can bring you to a conclusion as a Christian. I know I can bring you to a conclusion. Awake. That's right. Yeah. Watch this. That's good, sir. They worshiped the dragon and gave power unto the beast. They gave power unto the beast. If you look at the world, 7.9 billion people are on the planet. More than 5 billion is either Christian, Judaism, or Muslim. Mm -hmm. You hear Kenneth say that a Judy, Muslim was here before, Islam was here before. Anything. Colonization set the term. Judaism, Christianity, and Muslim all face the sword of colonization. I hear our brothers say, I speak Hebrew. You don't speak pure Hebrew. That's why Zechariah said, I will return you back to a pure language. Yes, that's right. That's right. You don't speak pure Hebrew. You speak what the colonizers told you Hebrew was. That's hard to swallow. That's why I'm in trouble there. <laughs> but colonization proves my point. Study colonization. One of the first things they did, the greatest weapon against our people, was to take our language. Uh, Maury Douglas, is there a man in the Bantus over in Africa that admits what I'm saying? He admits to it, don't he? That this is not pure Hebrew. This is colonized Hebrew. So when we think we speak in a pure language, we're not speaking a pure language. We're talking about a beast. This beast has devoured. Devoured. Emperor Hadrian said, I'm going to change the name of Jerusalem. I'm going to stamp out the law. Let Israel be remembered no more. 130, 138 AD. And Psalm said that they be remembered no more. History says that's true. Hadrian did it. Changed the name of Jerusalem. And his purpose and his goal, his edict is clear. That Israel be erased as a people. Mm. History confirms Psalms 83. Watch this. Watch this. Look what he says. I'm not going to, I got to get to those edicts, so I'm going to try to get through it. If I skip some things, it's because I find it not irrelevant to the conclusion. So now we know a beast rise from the sea. A system that is, that is so dreadful, so inhumane. Is that the Atlantic slave trade? Well, let's look. Let's look at the 10th verse. He that lived into captivity shall go. So that beast is dealing with what? Captivity. You know another slave, another slavery we was in that was in the sea. Mm. But I'll go farther, Maury Douglas. I'll show you the timeline, Revelation 17. This is why history is important. What are you doing, Pastor Wilkins? I'm making a case for history. And if Chase our history get a whole bunch of inboxes to join, I'm happy with that. <laughs> Watch this. Revelation 17. Hmm? 
Let's look at the timeline of the beast. Tenth verse. There are seven kings, five have fallen. Raw fell. When is this being written, first lady, Lady Wilkins? John's writing this, so it's in the captivity of the Romans. So that means Ra has fallen, Darius has fallen, Cyrus is down, Nezuchadnezzar never has failed, Alexandria has failed. Those are five kings, five have fallen. One is. When was this written? In Roman captivity. So the one is, is Julius Caesar. And one is yet to come. There's only one empire past the Roman Empire. The British Empire. He's telling you that after the Romans, there's going to get, and it's a short term, the Roman Empire, the British Empire was one of the shortest terms of an empire. So he's telling you that there's an empire that this beast will exist in because he wasn't existing in the Roman Empire. He's writing prophecy about the next empire that the scriptures say. Bishop, I hope I'm doing all right. So we know the next empire would have been who the Romans. Let's see what he says about the Romans. I mean the, the uh, British. Let's see what he says about the British. History is going to have to matter here because there's a lot of blanks. What's this? That's what he says. Go back to 13. Third verse is glaring. Third verse is glaring because I know history. It's screaming. The Ashkenazi Jew is a liar. It's screaming. Christianity is a liar. It's screaming. It. And it's pointing to you. You are the victims of the Atlantic slave trade. So yes, Judah and the Atlantic slave trade are right there, joined together. Who is Paul talking to? Judah. What's this? Third verse. And I saw one of his hands which were as wounded to death. The revolutionary war. The British fought the British because the Americans were the British in America. One hand was wounded as unto, not it did. Unto. The Revolutionary Wars, the British fought the British. And the British lost to the British. So now you got the Brits over here in Britain, and you got those who established themselves as American. You're not a country until after the Revolutionary War. You were still under the 13 colonies under the British. And fatal war is the British in America defeats the British themselves. And said, but it was healed. Bishop Smith, 1783, the Paris Treaty, the Americans and the British come back together. That's history. So that wound, what is that? That opposition has been healed. Can history prove that's what you're talking about, Pastor Wilkins? Then you don't then you need to know the rule of law. What is the principle of the rule of law in America? A man has a right to a fair trial. Where is that from? Yeah. That's from the Roman Empire. Who is the, the master of case law? Septimius. Who is Septimius? 193. He's a black emperor. He's from where? He's a Canaanite that makes his way all the way to the top. And he's a he's a master of the rule of law. He rewrites the rule of law in Roman, in the Roman Empire. And the 6th century emperor thought it was so brilliant that he added to it. And that same rule of law went to the British in the 13th century. And the Americans adopted in the 18th century. You have a right to a fair trial. That is that Roman rule of law. Daniel told you this. He said that fourth kingdom would have 10 toes, two legs. We know Constantine divided the kingdom, East Rome, West Rome, Constantinople, and West Rome. And there were 10 regions that made up the Roman Empire, those 10 toes. His 
history tells us this. Wait a minute, it's in the scripts. Yeah, but it's in history. You have to understand Philo and the Hellenized Jews of Alexandria because of their giftedness to take the Torah and add Greek philosophy to it. 